Argentina made it. Um, I'm with my Argentina jersey from four years ago. Another one of my favorites. I usually uh, am not the type that will put on a jersey right after the win. I've been wearing the Spain jersey for the entire game. I'm very superstitious if I wear the jersey of the team I'm rooting for. I believe the team's gonna lose. It's stupid, but I still do it. Same thing, I don't wear it on the day of the game because you might want to jinx it anyway. But it felt just right to put it on. Uh, many things are going through my head at the moment. Um, I think first and foremost, I have to say, I mean, I saw mostly the Argentina game. Argentina looked better. Argentina didn't look great, but they looked better. They looked like a functional team. They had a goalkeeper who deserved that name. They had Messi, who finally scored his goal after a beautiful pass. This is how you gotta get Messi into the game. And also a Messi that was everywhere on the field. Even more so than the other, other two games. Messi was everywhere. He was clearly into it. And it was clearly, yes, we have a chance. We better do that one. Um, don't mess around now. And that's what I got from Messi. Uh, I think he played great overall. He was not lucky in many situations. Um, but I think Messi played really well. Um, the team overall played well, except, yeah... There were a few misses. I mean, Iguain had two chances. We know Iguain misses chances, so maybe he could have done some more. Um, I actually like that they put Evar Banega in there. I'm still not sold on Mascherano. Uh, the penalty was entirely his. Um, you might want to discuss, yes, was this a full penalty? Yes, after whatever we have seen at this um, World Cup. Uh, why is this not a penalty? Why is not Mitrovic? Why is not, not anything on Kane a penalty? Um, but I gotta say, the soon, as soon as I knew that he's gonna review that one, I mean, it was in plain sight of the referee. And that does, just doesn't look good. And then he's uh, he's gonna review it or whatsoever. Um, it was clear that this is gonna, going to be a penalty. Uh, and Argentina also got a lucky break. I think with the second penalty appeal by... Um, Nigeria. I think I understand why he didn't give the penalty. It hit the head first and from that moment on uh, this is kind of he tried to control it. He did not make first contact with the hand. If you jump up and you make first contact with the hand that's for sure a penalty. But if it goes first you playing the ball with your head and then by just an unlucky circumstance it hits your arm that is not gonna be a penalty. Um, I think it was also the right call. I would have given the first penalty, I would not have given that one, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't know, there was one situation where Messi, I think, was through right after the first penalty, which they didn't show if this was a penalty in the second situation. Um, so I don't want to judge on that. Uh, it seemed also weird that the first shot on goal in the second half went in. Um, but Argentina should have decided that one in the first half. Um, there was the chance by Iguain. Um, maybe start split seconds earlier and you'll make it. There was the free kick that uh, Messi set onto the post. Um, prior to that free kick, um, Di Maria was sent running onto the goal and of course the question is um, was it a yellow or red card? I think since there was a second defender there I think the yellow was justified so overall I think I like the referee much better than any of the referees yesterday especially in the group B games. Um, Nigeria also had a big had big chances in the second half I mean the first half Nigeria was not present but in the second half um, Nigeria showed that they are a team and they were for a long time very well organized, but I kept telling to my wife, um, Argentina is slowly chipping away on those. I don't think they can keep this up. They're gonna get tired defending that crazily. And I saw it, I mean, it's starting at the 80th minute or so after they got this lucky break, suddenly uh, there were more passing moves in the Argentinian attack. And that was a good sign for Argentina. 
I, I thought at that moment, yes, uh, I think it might happen. I think it really might happen that they they're showing just Messi's short collection, which is better than mine, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I saw it coming. A um, little bit disappointed about the Argentinian fans. Peruvian fans would have chanted all the way through, but I understand higher expectations, so you don't. You just don't uh, cheer on the team, but I think it would have needed him. And of course, after Rojo scores the goal, uh, all hell breaks loose. Now, um, it was also interesting, like yesterday, that it was a second game in play, which I didn't see, and I thought, oh, this is safe, this is safe. Croatia even got the lead. And then Iceland gets a penalty, justifiably so, uh, makes it 1-1 and I'm thinking, oh, Argentina needs two goals and it was still 1-1 when Rojo scored the goal and I kept telling to my wife, one is not enough, we need a second, we need a second and then a minute later or so it seemed uh, saying on the TV channel, goal in Rostov and I'm thinking, oh, the whole thing over again and it was a Croatian goal. Now, that relieved me, and then I knew that Argentina would kill it off, because I think Iceland was never going to come back. But having said that, I just saw the highlights of the Iceland game, and I'm glad I did not have a picture, a little picture in the screen, uh, or um, watched on computer and TV, that I just took the feed for the Argentina game, where they update me on the scores. I would have died a thousand deaths there. Uh, Iceland was threatening the Croatia gold. Iceland should have won that game and should have won that game comfortably. There were many chances that they had. Uh, it's unbelievable. And tip of the head to Iceland. I think in that group, uh, Argentina was probably the least deserving of advancing, but when they got the chance, they got the chance. Uh, quality prevailed. Iceland, I think they played only one really bad half. And that was the second half against Nigeria that put them in a really bad situation. Nigeria played, yeah, I think they played one really good half against Iceland. Uh, they played a decent second half against Argentina. Uh, I don't think they were really on the field against um, Croatia. Croatia won all the games, even with the second string team and the second um, game. So, of course, Croatia deserves full credit. It was a tight game against Argentina in the first half. Second half, after Caballero's mistake, Croatia was deadly. And no one would like to play Croatia, I think. That was high drama. And I gotta say, before I go to the directors and matchups, it was... I knew this is not going to be a boring evening. Uh, too much a play, even if it would, the game would have been boring, just seeing the expressions and the emotions in, of the Argentinian team. And then on top of that, Ed Maradona. Did you see him after the 2-1 flipping everyone off? I mean, the vintage Maradona. He is not your clean star, uh, the super clean, feel-good star. Maradona is Maradona. Love him or hate him. I find more loveful. I actually I like Maradona uh, a lot because he's just himself. However flawed, and he is very flawed. I mean, and he's the first one to admit it himself. Argentina in 2010 was not a well organized team, but with Maradona on the sidelines, this was the greatest show of the entire tournament. Only when Spain finally picked it up against Germany and really played like Spain, maybe the focus shifted a little bit. But Maradona, as a coach, was the greatest show I've ever seen at any World Cup. And I unfortunately I haven't seen the 86 World Cup, I only saw the final, my first soccer game that I ever watched, that I knowingly watched, let's put it that way. Uh, it's just high drama when Emma Maradona is there. And with Argentina, almost like with Italy, it's always drama. This time it ended well, like it, when it ended well. But I think this is why I like to watch Ar Argentina. There's drama. Also, I always liked 
that Argentina has these two sides. I mean, Brazil is all beautiful game, beautiful big game, beautiful game, which they more often than not do not live up. So for that, I have some disappointments about Brazil, it's just built in, in a way. As long as I'm watching soccer, it started in the 1990 World Cup, for real, I would say, um, Argentina, um, Brazil rarely uh, convinced me. But Argentina did, because I didn't have that high expectations, and they usually have high quality players, plus they have this little um, gamesmanship that I also like in, in the Italians. Um, it's not necessarily all fair, but it, it makes it more interesting. And so, yeah, and given that many Argentinian players are anyway with Italian ancestry, it's, uh, it's almost natural. Um, and I still say the only time I saw those two playing each other, that semi-final, Argentina, Italy in Naples at the 1990 World Cup. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Just the setup. You have the Italian national team playing a semi-final on the home country, but the problem is they play in Naples and the god of Naples is playing for the other team. I still, uh, it's, this for me is from just a sheer um, tension standpoint. Uh, that's the game of the entire World Cup history. Uh, you never had that, and I think, and I'm digressing a lot now. Uh, you never had that before that uh, World Cup was played in the best, in the country of the best league where all the stars are playing, as in Italy 1990. So it was a really great World Cup for that. Probably had the wrong winner from my point of view, because I really, I think if Italy would have made it past or Argentina, they would have got, given Georgia I mean, a good run for the money. Germany was great there, but. Um, I think they were showing some weaknesses at that point, but yeah, this decimated Argentina squad just had no chance. So that was my thoughts. High drama in Group D, as in Group B. I just thought Group B was maybe a little bit more dramatic, uh, just because Croatia killed that game off, fortunately, uh, for my health, but um, it was right up there. So everything that went wrong at Group C went right in the, the, uh, the, this evening. I'm very ha ha happy about that. Jersey matchups. Um, of course, I really liked that Argentina is playing in the traditional colors. I was, although I'm sorry that we didn't see the crazy Nigeria home kit more often. Um, but I think it was a good jersey matchup. It was a classic World Cup matchup. Uh, if that green was a little bit more Nigeria flag green, would have been perfect, but I like the dark creatures. I think Nigeria has really, really nice choices. The other game, yeah. How did I dare even think that Iceland will play in blue and Croatia will play in their checkered red white kit? No, we have the ugly Croatia kit. I really, really don't like that one. It just, uh, and part of it is surely the disappointment that. It doesn't use the royal blue. Uh, better with that one. I, uh, Croatia away kit is usually one of my favorites, but it hasn't been so since the 2014 World Cup. So, yeah. Again, somewhere it made sense, but please let them play in their respective home jerseys. They did so during qualification. There was not a single game during World Cup qualification where Iceland was not playing in blue and Croatia was not playing in the checkers. I don't get it. But hey, FIFA Kids Rule World Cup. We want to show as many weird color combinations as possible. So that was kind of the last check mark of throwing a wrench into my nice jersey predictions. Well, let me know what you thought. Um, I'll be wearing this Argentina jersey tomorrow somewhat proudly. I do know they're playing against France. And that's the last thing I'm gonna say. I'm really wondering now, will Messi pull a Roberto Baggio or Zinedine Zidane? And will he do a one-up on them? Both of them lost in the final. That's my final thought. France is up next. That will be an interesting game, I think.
So have a good night. Let me know what you thought about the game, jersey matchups, whatever. Uh, and yeah, I'll talk to you soon.